All right, good afternoon, everyone. Joining us online, it is 12.30, and this is the second Stump the Strategist, virtual Stump the Strategist of the year of 2015. These are our fortnightly Stump the Strategist sessions. So glad you could join us. Hello. I have with me today the gorgeous Nicola Adams, one of our strategy execs, who will be answering the questions, and I am Glenn Bartlett, the strategy director here at Step Change. So, for those of you who don't know how this works, it's actually really simple for you, a little bit more complicated for us. We will answer any question you have on marketing and communications in nine minutes. It's a fine line, you might say, between bravery and stupidity. You give us the question, we will answer it in nine minutes, and then you, our virtual audience, get to vote online whether we were stumped or whether we passed that particular question. So it's a great opportunity for all of you out there in, uh, in, the, in the wide world of the web to ask any, any uh, questions that might be on your mind. And send them to stumpme at stepchangemarketing.com. So that's it, right. stumpme at stepchangemarketing.com. That's one way to get your question in or in the little box on the, the chat box on your go-to webinar, you can also write it in there. We'll be recording this blog, so if you miss it, if you miss a little bit, if you've missed the start, it will be on our stepchangemarketing.com blog as of uh, a few days from now. So it'll all be there. You won't miss anything. So I think that's it, isn't it, Nikki? That's it. Let's right get then. started. Without further ado, do we have a question? I go to my uh, able assistant here, who's off camera, face Hi, Dave. for radio. Hey. That's Dave. <laughs> yeah. Dave, what have we got that's come in? We do have a question from Shamila. Shamila? Yes. How would you spell that? C-H-A-R-M-I-L-L-A. -L -L -A. Hi, Shamila. And the question is, hey guys, my question is regarding my new mobile phone app. Mm -hmm. I have an app I'm launching similar to Uber, but for beauty on demand, called Jet Set Go. It will be a two-sided marketplace, beauty professionals, so freelance stylists, and consumers for beauty services. The idea is to go to offices, homes, hotels, etc., and we get you ready. Everything is express and we target the time poor, busy female, specifically the corporate females who work long hours and can't find their beauty services or special event styling. Where do I sign up? <laughs> We want to position ourselves as VIP, high-end, however, we will be very competitive on pricing with salons slash cosmic counter, cosmetic counters. All styles will be vetted by us and we will have a rating slash review system. So the question, ladies and gentlemen, is how do I get people to download the app and use it? Download. How do you get people to download the app? and then use it, okay? All right, any clarifying questions, Nikki? I think that was pretty clear. So it's aimed corporate females who are time poor? Corporate females who are time poor. And they'll come to you, that's all. And so how do, you do, do we have any it? sense of a budget for this? No budget. No, how do we get people to download it with no budget? No budget, right. Uh, it doesn't give us a specified budget. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's kick off. You ready to go? Nine minutes on the clock. All right. Say when. Hit it. <laughs> when. Okay. So there's no golden bullet for this one, or silver bullet, or platinum bullet, whichever color bullet you're looking for. I think there's a number of things that we need to do to get people to, to download your app. I think the first place I'd start is, is the name. So I think, I think that it was Jet Set Go, was it Dave? That's what I wrote down here. Yes. So when I think about a name, I think a name is, is crucial for, for any kind of app. And generally speaking, you'd want a name that is either very short and snappy, like Uber. I think you referenced Uber in your question. That's a great uh, snappy line, uh, snappy name, sorry. Or you want a name that actually describes what the service is. So you talked about uh, beauty on demand, I think has been the category, but the name Jet Set Go, for me, it talks almost about travel. I, I, the moment I, I hear that, I think this is something to do with 
with, we're flying somewhere and it's a quick way of traveling. So I would start by looking at the name. And I'd either, I'd either look at something that's snappy and short, or again, I'd go with something like Beauty On Demand as a name. Very descriptive, very clear in terms of what it's all about. Secondly, I think targeting. Very, very, very specific focus is going to be key to this because the way you're going to get people to download it is through word of mouth. That's going to be the, the, key, the key thing for you. So first off, I'd start with looking at one location and one location only and I'd make sure that you've got that one location well and truly serviced and serviced really well before you try and be everywhere. So for example, you might, you might, uh, you might choose Sydney, the central Sydney to be the place that you absolutely launch this thing and it works really well there. So you need to get that supply first. That would be the first point is get the supply on board. Make sure you've got enough beauty therapists and your very discreet location. So then we're only getting people to download it that work within a very specific location. Right, so tapping into what you said about word of mouth, I think, personally, I would download an app if it was recommended to me. So in order to leverage a work and word of mouth, and that might be through friends or colleagues, but it could also be through beauty blogs, uh, through magazines, that kind of thing. So one way to do this would be through partnerships, and partnerships of where are these women? So to start with, they're potentially in corporate firms that have social events, for example, a law ball or an accounting dinner. And you could target those social clubs. So offer a pre-hour before the, the dinner where the girls can all get together, have a great time, and then go off together to the event. You could target hotels where people are staying before the event. So try and partnership there and get some advertising in the rooms. Or you could try and target the beauty blogs. So blogs like The Glow, I think is Australia's leading women's health and beauty. So target that website, try to get the word of mouth through offering them free free samples, free trials, and get the word out there. Anything? Yeah, thanks Nikki. I, th I think uh, one of the things which Nikki's touched on there, which is, is gonna be really important and is often overlooked with apps and online type businesses, is actually the blend between online and offline you find the vast majority of online sales are actually driven off from an off some kind of offline trigger. And I think if we can get as discreet as what Nikki's talking about in terms of our target audience, so downtown Sydney, big corporate firms, you can actually do quite a good job of getting to those people in an offline way, spending very little. So it could just be um, some kind of display in a foyer, for example, um, a conference booth, um, a hotel foyer, for example, uh, little cards, little postcards and hotel foyers, those kind of offline activities drive the online activity. But ultimately, once we, we need to get, it's that first thousand, it's that first couple of thousand, it's not actually going to be the real challenge. The real challenge is how do we use the first thousand or two thousand to then sell to the next thousand, hundred thousand, million women. Uh, and, that's, and that's where it comes down to the service. Service is absolutely everything. So supply and service are interlinked when it comes to this. So two-sided market, you have to get supply right first. That's what Uber did when they, when they launched. Everywhere they launched, they essentially buy the supply for that first two, three months until they've got enough demand to actually fill it. That might hurt a little bit to start with, but it's the only way because what we cannot suffer is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a service or a ex customer experience that is not 100% perfect from the get-go because every customer you want recommending to other customers. So that's the first thing is get the service spot on. And it's the little things. And it's actually training these beauty therapists to essentially be your marketers for you. So do they turn up with a glass of champagne? Do they bring um, additional perfumes? Do they, you know, I'm probably not the best person. <laughs> Might be Nikki's the best person Champagne's to talk about that. Champagne's a good start, variety of colours. Is it something that they can't get when they're doing it themselves hmm. pretty much? So you want those little that's touches. The alternative. It's like uh, Uber now have Spotify linkage within the, within the cabs, so you can actually listen to your own music. What are those little things which make it the experience remarkable? And then what you do is you offer a member get member discount, a member get member offer of some description. So this might be recommend it to one of your friends, give them this code, and they get a twenty dollar discount on the on their first beauty treatment, for example. That tends to start to get the ball rolling, and then if it's simple enough must be super simple and if the service is good enough 
and it's, and it's necessary, we're actually answering a need that really exists, then I think this thing will start to, start to build some momentum of its own. Nikki? I was just going to take a quick step back and say before you do all of this, it's really important that you think about the brand that you're portraying. So take a think, think about the brand personality. What, if you're a person, what personality do you want to portray to the rest of the world, to these women? So, for example, that'll make the question of what should the experience be like a lot easier. Should we be providing them with champagne if we're going for a luxury feel, a lover personality? Should there be chocolates or luxury? Uh, the colours that you have, it all adds together and it will make these little things like the experience a lot easier to keep in line. Absolutely. So strong, strong message, strong brand personality before all of this begins. So I think that's largely covered it off. In the last two minutes, I'll just summarise where we've got to here. So I think the first thing is, is name. You've got to have a compelling name. There's almost not an app out there today that works that doesn't have either a really short, snappy, descriptive name, a uh, short, short, snappy kind of uh, emotive name, sorry, or a descriptive name that lets you know what it's about. So that, we've got to get that right to start with. Uh, if we focus in one location at a time, that's definitely the way to go. That's the way Uber launched. It's the way, if you, if you go back a few years, the likes of Starbucks, etc., launched, is you dominate an area and you make sure you've got an amazing service in that area, and only then do you launch. Then you can create a degree of anticipation about perhaps the launch in Melbourne coming soon, or the launch in Brisbane coming soon. And of course, people will talk, and the Sydney people will talk to those other people, and they'll start to build that anticipation for you. So one location at a time. Scarcity is the other thing. Is ensure, ensure that your price is right so that not everybody can afford this. If you are going to go luxury, you, you, need, to, you need to in some way charge for, that, for that, that service and make sure that it's profitable for everyone. Because if this is not profitable for the beauty therapists, it'll fall down. You know, Uber works really well because it, it actually adds value to the, to the taxi drivers. We need to do the same with the beauty therapists because essentially you're taking a clip of the ticket. They need to make sure that the ticket's a little bit larger. Offline, online. Make sure that you've got the appropriate offline activities. And because you're going to be really, really tight with your geographic targeting, that's not that difficult to do. It's postcards in, in bars, it's going to the gyms where, where, where women might be working out before they go out, and it's ensuring that in the foyers, for example, of big buildings, that's, those are places you want to be with your little roadshow talking about it with your therapist there. So that's key. And then member get member in the office around that. So you've got a great service. Ultimately, once you get that first thousand or so, it's all going to be about the, the service. So the little things around the service and the offers that go with that are going to be key. I think that sums it up. Just in time. Thank you very much for the question. Good question. Camilla, thank you. All right. So how did we go, Dave? Is this where we do the online vote thing? Yeah. You ready for this? Yeah. I haven't done this before. The poll is up. The poll is up. The poll is up. Right. So if you take a moment to pass or stump us. <sighs> Just They're a few more in. seconds. They're coming in. The poll is in progress. The poll is up. The poll is closed. And how do we think we did? I'm going to go with, with a pass. Oh, 100%. Got there. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. hope that was helpful. Now, I think we have got time for one more question, do we, Dave? One more question. One more question. So, have we got one online? Anything that's come in there? Yeah, we do. Just so, I'm starting a coffee business. Uh, selling coffee beans. Coffee beans. Uh, yep. Some really rare imports. So who's this, who's this from, Dave? Uh, doesn't have a name. I think it's a brand new coffee company that they're okay. that they're launching. So they're they're launching and starting a coffee business, and they're rare and high quality beans. Mm -hmm. And so far, they've just been going out and talking to cafes. Uh, it's currently just a solopreneur, so it's one guy. Yep. And he's working about 50% in his full-time job and 50% in this on his new business. A hobby. <laughs> yeah, and so he really wants to know 
how, what would you guys do to launch in Australia? And, and how would you go about this? A new coffee business. Did he give us any other, any, any other uh, kind of background in terms of the coffee itself? Rare. Just that it's rare and high quality. It's rare and high quality. Rare and high quality. And unfortunately, they're not online right now. They're not online? No. Okay. Right. Rare and high okay. quality. Okay. So, do you have any other questions, Nikki? Not really. They're just talking to cafes at the moment. Has he? You can't, haven't got any more information, do you? That's all I've got for <laughs> all you. Alright. Alright. Turn up to tango. We can tango, if, indeed. Let's go with that then. Nine minutes? Am I on? Mm. <laughs> that's, that's Alright, so, let's do it. Technical issues here. And technical. we are off and racing this time. Okay, so. First thought that comes up here when we're talking about coffee into Australia is, boy, this is a competitive marketplace. There better be something rare and high quality about this particular coffee. But I think there needs to be something beyond that as well. So uh, there's an awful lot of players in the market talking about some kind of quality or rareness or, or uh, you know, organic or fair trade. There's a lot of stories around coffee. And what I think we need to win in this market is, is actually kind of three key things. So the first one I'd go with is, is a purpose or a story. We need to be really, really clear on what that is, very consistent about it. Why are we doing this? What's the story behind this coffee? What makes this coffee remarkable, if you like? So that's the first thing we need to be really clear on. The second thing we need to do is what I've called here, our, is get really clear on what our predatory message is. And what I mean by that is, in this instance, it's not about uh, coming out and, and selling more coffee. We're actually going to be taking business from somebody else. It's not like coffee is not a need that has already been satisfied. The need for coffee has been satisfied in this market. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, who's got our money? Who's currently got our money today? Because we need to take that money off them if we're going to win. And we need to look at them and think, what is their greatest strength? We need to understand what their strength is. Because every strength has an inherent weakness in it. And if we can understand what the inherent weakness is in their strength, and then use our strength against that weakness, we can actually create a predatory campaign that works really strongly just for us and not for anybody else. A great example of this would be Burger King taking on McDonald's. McDonald's greatest strength is it's consistency, right? Wherever you go, you, a Big Mac is a Big Mac is a Big Mac. I was reading yesterday that in the US, uh, the French fries, McDonald's French fries, have I think 14 ingredients in them. So this is a, a potato chip. Should really have potato, salt, and oil. Arguably three ingredients. It has 14, uh, and, and some of them are quite, uh, quite tongue twisters to be honest. But that's all about providing consistency. They want the chip to taste exactly the same, the French fry to taste exactly the same, wherever they are. So their strength is consistency, but of course their weakness is they can't do anything to tailor it. You can't have it your way, if you like. You have to have what they're offering or that's it. So of course, if you're Burger King, you could come in and offer a variance on that, a variance on your burgers, which actually attacks the weakness that arises from McDonald's strength. So that's the predatory angle. The third thing, which I'll come on to in a moment after, after Nikki's had, had a chat here, is something remarkable beyond, beyond story and beyond message. Nikki. Right, so story and message, once you've got that sorted, it's then time to just step back and put yourself in the customer's shoes. So in this case, it's cafe owners or restaurant owners. So think about the journey from their position. There's usually, we use about six points of the customer journey. So you have the finding out. How do the cafe owners find out about the coffee brand? Do they, you might find actually when you go talking to coffee, oh sorry, cafe owners, that they just buy the beans that come with the coffee machine they have. That's often the case. Well then in that case, do we need to have a partnership with coffee machines? These kind of insights might come out as you step through the customer journey. 
You then address their concerns. So once they know about you, do they hop online and have a look at your website? Do they talk to other people? Are there any testimonials that we can throw their way? Uh, any videos we can put online that will ease some of their concerns that they have about this uh, new high quality and rare bean. Then you meet them face to face. So once you head in there and you have a chat to them, what do you do that's different to every other coffee cafe, sorry, every other coffee provider? So what does a cafe owner want out of that and how do you differentiate yourself? Then you move on to the sale, which in itself do you I don't know, do something a little different, do you throw a little freebie in, is there something in it for the cafe owner? Moving on to using the product, what's the ongoing relationship be like? Is there ongoing maintenance? Can they make an order at 10pm at night and it's there in the morning? What's the service itself like? Are there any guarantees around using the product, getting the coffee in when they need it? And then the follow up, so again that continues the ongoing relationship. How do you relate to each other ongoing? and keep in touch. Yeah, just picking up on one of the things Nikki talked about there is, is the, the actual service around the coffee. So you can differentiate with the coffee and the story around the coffee, but also the service around the coffee. And hearing that you're a solopreneur, you're actually working another job, mm -hmm. the ease of delivery, that may well be a pain point for cafes. It, it may not be, but it may well be. So if you could work out an online delivery system which is fairly automated and very easy for them to use, that might be the difference that makes a difference to start with. So that it makes it automated for you and really simple for your customers. The thing I wanted to get to is, once you're clear on your story and your message, is what's something remarkable that's really gonna make you stand out in this, se in this segment? And I think when it comes to coffee, it is so competitive, we need to go that extra mile. And this is where I think course-related marketing, or what we might call uh, kind of charitable giving marketing is another way of kind of thinking about it, I think is really interesting in this space. So it should ideally flow from your story. So if you found this coffee in uh, you know, the, the, the highlands of Indonesia, and you think about sustainability, what could we do for the highlands of Indonesia? What's, what's the issue that they're facing? Is it deforestation? Is it palm oil plantations? Is it the extinction of orangutans, etc.? And then how can you use your coffee in the first world to actually support the third world? I think this is where increasingly, when we start to think about authenticity and the way people are beginning to make decisions, particularly the type of people you're targeting with high-end boutique coffee, they want to feel like they're doing something right doing something good for the world. And the only way as a first world consumer living in a big city to actually make a difference is to make a difference through the purchases we make. So if you can somehow make people feel good about buying your coffee, because every time they buy your coffee, five cents goes to support orangutans in Indonesia, for example, it gives you that leg up. It also gives you something that cafe owners can get on board with as well. They can also pass it on to their customers. So it's a message that... Absolutely. Talking, worth talking about. Yeah. Now, if, if you can, if you can uh, successfully launch this, the, the way to bring it to life is to ensure that not only do the customers feel good about it and the, and the cafe feel good about it, but that it's really clean, it drives sales for their customers. So that you're actually driving the, the cafe's business on their behalf. And that's where actually really subtle point of sale or discreet because as a high-end boutique coffee maker, you don't want to be too in your face. But if you can somehow give cafes um, just a bit of point of sale on the counter or on their coffee machine that makes it clear that by buying at this cafe, you're supporting this really worthwhile cause, then it's not only an opportunity to market your brand to both customers and the, the uh, cafes themselves, but also a great opportunity to drive sales to the cafe. Scarcity. I want to talk about scarcity. Please. I want to talk about scarcity because scarcity is a massive driver for people. The moment things become scarce, people want them. So a great example of this was when Concord announced that, that it was going to shut up shop and there was going to be no more. Immediately overnight, the price of tickets on Concord kind of tripled. Now, if you can make it really clear that your coffee is extremely scarce, even if it's not, make it clear that it's scarce. It's what Apple do when they launch new products. They never have enough supply to go around. So that actually, what you want is a bit of a bidding one. You want to keep your prices up. So scarcity, think scarcity. I think 16. 
and, in, and, and then finally the route to market. So cafes might not be the only place to sell. It might be that you get into the first class lounges at Qantas or Virgin. There's a lot of other places to think about which might be less competitive. So there's a few ideas for you. I hope that has helped. We're out of time. Thank you very much. So the only thing I think left to do here, Dave, is just to check out whether we passed or whether we were stumped. Waiting is on. How are you feeling about this, Nikki? Oh, well with a list like that. It's a good list. It's a good list. Two more seconds. And the boats are, right. are in. And it's a pass. Oh. It is a pass. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I hope that was useful. A couple of questions there. We'll be doing this again two weeks' time at 12.30 again. So that's Wednesday in two weeks' time. If you have any questions between now and then, please, that's the 11th of February in two weeks' time. Just been told by our assistant here, Dave. Any questions between now and then, Stump me at stepchangemarketing.com. If you want to have a look again at what we talked about today, that will be on our blog at stepchangemarketing.com. And our YouTube page. And our YouTube page and in various other places around the World Wide Web. Share it. <laughs> so, thanks again and we will see you in a couple of weeks. See you later. Bye-bye.